What's it like being the head of a Jewish temple in Georgetown, South Carolina on a day like today? On a day like today, it, it's really, uh, what, what can I tell you? It, it, it's an out-of-body experience. I, 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 I have trouble, uh, I mean, this is personal, of course, but I, I have trouble uh, processing you know, what, what is going on. Because I've been there. It's a long time ago, but I, I've been there. And I just, I, I look at what's on television and I can't believe you know, what I, I'm seeing. And, and uh, just to sit and, and think about it. And then, you know, there's an outpouring from the outside in, you know, saying, well, well, you know, I'm so sorry. And, and I, you know, I'm saying to myself, yes, it's a sorrowful situation, but you have to worry also, because Hamas is an organization that looks at most of us as infidels. And, and you know, you're as much danger as I, as I am if they decide to go global with this. Now, do you have anybody personally in Israel that you are concerned about right now, personally? Uh, I, I have uh, uh, children of friends, mm -hmm. you know, and, and no one that I, I, I've had a close relationship with. But have you heard about them? Are they okay? Did you, do you uh, know? One is in Gaza. Oh, went to Gaza. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know he, he, he's uh, an American who, who uh, went for Israeli citizenship. And uh, you don't think he's a hostage? No, oh, okay. that he's okay. not. Okay. He's a soldier. Okay. But he's he's in the worst of it. Mm -hmm. How about you, Mr. Andy? Do you do you have anybody personally? I, mean, I know you're worried about the whole country, but I mean personally. I do not. But um, as lay leader for this evening's service, I've gotten names from several of our congregants who will be specifically offering prayers for this evening. So among the congregation, there are several who have friends around. Now, as far as the congregation of those uh, goes, have, have you been getting calls from them this week, you know, expressing concern or asking for prayer or anything like that? Interestingly enough, the calls that I have received have been from the community, not from the membership. Uh, and well, this morning, the, the, the pastor from uh, Pauly's Island uh, Com community, community, mm -hmm. yeah, community Church called me and, and basically said, what, what can we do? Here's what we're prepared to do. And he mentioned that they've collected funds that for tonight's service they could put a policeman outside, not knowing that we already do that. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, it's that type of thing. They have volunteers there who will patrol while we have services. And, you know, the, that's what's going on. Now, is that happen. actually going to happen? No, okay. because we have our Because you have security? Okay. Yeah, have security. I'll say this. So, um, if people don't know, we're a very small congregation. We do not have a full-time rabbi. We do have a rabbi that visits with us several times a year. So Friday night services are conducted by a group of lay leaders, Richard and I uh, included. It just so happens that we work out a schedule a year in advance. I've been scheduled to do this service for a while, not knowing what was going on. Mm -hmm. And that, that is published. And so I've heard from members of the congregation, yeah. as they know I'm doing the service, there are certain suggestions that I've received about prayers or ideas that they'd like to uh, have considered as part of the services. So as we gather here tonight, still reeling from the horrific attack by Hamas in Israel six, year, six days ago, we're shocked and we're angered at the senselessness of the violent acts that have taken place. We seek to make sense of this, to understand the reason why the attacks happen. Words cannot describe how we all feel right now. There's simply no terms in the dictionary to describe the depth of pain, the outrage, and the sadness that we feel. But neither can the words contain the strength of the Jewish people's resolve and the immense power of our faith and our unity. United as one and firm in our trust in God, Torah assures us victory over the evil people blinded 
by darkness. It is no coincidence that the hostilities broke out on Simchat Torah, the day we joyously read how God created heaven and earth. It was Adonai who gave us the land of Israel to his beloved nation, and it is Adonai who will surely watch over us today. And let us remember, we are all in this together, and together with God's help we shall overcome. And we're not completely alone. The world has rallied around Jews and Israel, and even in our community, our community is rallying around us. You'll notice the flowers in front of the bema. For those of you that didn't see two days ago, the mayor of Georgetown brought a vase of flower, placed them on the steps, and did a very nice Facebook post. And the card that was with the flowers read, Lifting your congregation and the nation of Israel in prayer. Meryl Carroll, Jerome. And since she placed the flowers, others have done the same. And again, they're in front of us this evening. So tonight, we're going to offer prayers. Others than what we often do or we usually do from the prayer book. We're going to pray for healing for the injured, the safe return for the hostages, and divine protection for our brave IDF soldiers in Israel. You know, whenever a Jew encounters a challenge, the go-to response is often to cry out to God in prayer. And so I'd like to offer, I'd like to offer the following prayer by Rabbi Karen Kadar as we begin tonight's service. She calls this peace and strength. Holy One of Blessing, we pray for the soldiers who are called to defend the people of Israel. Keep them safe. When they are weary, give them strength. When they are scared, give them courage. May they find strength and faith in the days ahead. Holy One of Blessing, we pray for the people of Israel who long to live under the canopy of peace. Keep them safe. When they are threatened, protect them from harm. When they are wounded and bereaved, grant them healing and comfort. May they find strength and courage in the days ahead. May our voices carry prayers of hope that the people of Israel know that they are not alone. Dear God, give us strength and know that there is nothing more sacred than peace. Grant us, dear God, faith, courage, and wisdom. And so let's begin our service this evening with a special candle lighting. And I'd like to ask Gary and Lieberman to come up to the beam. Happy Shabbat candles give light to all who behold them. So may we, by our lives, give light to all who behold us. As their brightness reminds us of the generations of Israel who have kindled light, so may we, in our own day, be among those who kindle light. And before we light these candles, I just want you to also take notice there's an extra candle up here tonight because we've all been asked around the world to light an extra candle alongside the Shabbat candles tonight to honor the massacred, to pray for those taken hostage or injured, to thank our IDF soldiers, and in solidarity with Israel. And if you'll please all join me after I light the candles. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, sovereign of the universe, who hallows us with mitzvah, commanding us to kindle the light of Shabbat. But if by chance they stumble across it on the internet in Israel, what's your message to them tonight? Well, our, our message number one is we are heartbroken. We are praying for them. And, and you know, we're at a point, at this point, you know, we, we don't know what to do that would be helpful to them. But we're certainly not ignoring them. We, we, we feel for them terribly. And I would also add, you know, it, it's shocking, but, you know, Jewry across the world is very united at this point. It's one of those catalyst events that really brings together all of us from around the world to show our support for what's going on in Israel. 